Today I'm gonna show you how you can take a relatively average and pretty boring snapshot just like this one right here and how you can still turn it into an amazing picture at the end and really get the most out of it and I'm gonna show you every single step from start to finish in just about 10 minutes. I'm gonna start out with bringing up the shadows as well as bringing down the highlights both by 100 and that will just give me a very neutral picture with a lot of details in both areas. Then I'm gonna bring up the whites and I don't really have to worry about some stuff being clipped so I'm just gonna go by eye because I'm gonna use these clipped areas later on for an effect. As for the contrast, it's already very very contrasty from the darks to the bright parts, so instead of actually exaggerating that even more, I'm gonna go quite a bit into the minus contrast and as you can see, it looks a lot lighter, a lot more pleasing in my opinion. Then the same thing actually goes on with the clarity as well, because clarity will just exaggerate your very fine textures and since we have so many leaves in this picture, it would really not work, it makes it look cluttered and terrible, so instead I'm actually gonna go a little bit into the minus to make it look even more simplistic. And since I want to go for a very dramatic picture, I'm also going to bring up the vibrance and saturation a little bit, especially with raw files that can really work. Then color temperature is a very important slider and as you can see, I shot this during the later part of the day, but instead of actually making the whole picture very warm, I'm going to keep it relatively cool and maybe even go a bit more into the blues here. And in terms of the tint, maybe just a little bit more magenta-ish. The whole reason to keep the overall temperature relatively cool is so I can go down into the split toning, go into the highlights and just click on this little box right here and just add warm tones in the highlights. And that way it will give you a lot more differentiation from highlights to shadows and it will just make your whole picture look a lot more interesting as well as more natural. And you can even go into the shadows and add even more blue tones there, so you have an even more distinct difference from shadows to highlights. And here's from before, here's afterwards, it's not a huge difference, but it definitely helps the overall mood. And especially if you look closely in the trees and in the leaves right here, you can really see the difference, it's much more colored and much more interesting. Then let's go up again and more specifically into the tonal curve. Now this will really greatly depend on your personal preferences and on the picture itself. So I can absolutely not tell you what to do here whatsoever. It's really very very different from picture to picture but you know sometimes it can have a little bit of an effect as it did here. Then with HSL tool, now this is usually not something that has a huge impact but I'm just gonna go wrap this little pinpointer right here next to the hue, go over the greens and just make the overall green tones a little bit warmer but really nothing crazy. Then the rest of it, it's really not worth to play around with, it has such a small difference. So let's go on, detail tool is also something that we are not gonna have time here. So lens corrections, I'm actually gonna remove chromatic aberration real quick so all of the green and purple fringing on the high contrast edges will be gone as you can see from before to after, really a huge difference. And I'm also gonna enable profile correction and just choose my lens, in this case the Canon 8255 kit lens and that will remove all of the distortion. Then transform, really nothing we're gonna need here for this forest picture. So let's go down into the effects instead and here I'm gonna add some vignetting. What vignetting is, is just making the corners darker and if you do it in a reasonable way then it can actually really benefit your overall mood and especially in pictures that were shot during the later part of the day. As you can see here from before any vignetting to quite a bit vignetting, it actually really works for the overall mood and it also adds more attention automatically towards the center and I might even fine-tune that a little bit more and also bring the feather a bit more towards the right but from before to after actually quite a big difference and mostly in evening pictures that can really be very beneficial. Then for the last tool of the global adjustments which is the camera calibration for the profiles I'm just gonna go through all of them and see what they do to the picture. Now what this is is just a change of your overall hue and color and overall look of your picture. This is also something that you will just have with a raw file. So this can really be beneficial to change your hues and you know it's worth to play around with it, see if it works better and in some cases it will have a bigger impact than in others. But here from Adobe standard to camera neutral 
I actually like camera neutral a little bit better and it's not a huge difference here, but it definitely can be, so be sure to play around with it. And I'm also gonna go real quick into the primary color sliders. A thing to note here is that if I, for example, bring up or down the hue of the blue primary color, it will also affect the greens and any other color. So it's just something that you want to be aware of. But here it's kind of the fine tuning of your overall color and it can really be worth to play around with it. Sometimes it has a bigger impact, sometimes a lesser. But here I do think that it's worth to take the time, especially because we have so many green tones. I really want to make sure that I have the best possible green tone there is. So let's change that around a little bit as well. You know, here it uh, usually doesn't work to go too far into either direction, but a little bit might actually work. And lastly, with the blue saturation, it's really no big difference. And from before to after any camera calibration adjustments, now this might not seem like a huge difference, and it certainly isn't a huge difference, but from before you can see the greens are a little bit more mushed together and less distinct, and afterwards it's really a fine tuning of everything, so even though it might not have a huge difference, it's still very very valuable and certainly one of the most important tools that you have within Lightroom. So after all of the global adjustments, we're gonna go into the local adjustments and this is really where you're gonna customize everything and make your picture truly unique and play with the light and so on. So first thing I'm gonna start out with is by adding a graduated filter over the bottom of the picture. And you wanna make sure that you have very soft edges if you do any of these adjustments. But I'm gonna go here into the minus exposure actually quite a lot. Although, of course, not too crazy, you know, you always want to make sure that you keep your adjustments looking natural. So this will just close out the picture from below and creates an even bigger differentiation from foreground to background. And from before this one filter to after. Then let's also add the same thing with the very top of this picture, also just to kind of add an additional layer of vignetting and closing out the picture. It really can work. And while I'm at it, I'm actually gonna grab another filter with a very soft edge this time, even softer than the ones before. And I'm gonna angle it like this over the entire left side of the picture and then just bring down the exposure for the filter and with it for the entire left side. And before I elaborate on that, I'm actually gonna grab another one, this time also with a very soft edge and it's very important that you bring it in pretty much parallel to one another so whereas this one covers the left side, this one covers the right side. And here I'm gonna go into the opposite and just go into the plus exposure. So why do I do that? The reason for it is because here you can definitely see that the light is coming from the right, from the trees right here. When in the left it's not really a light source so you might as well also exaggerate that to really get the most out of your overall complexity of the light. And from even just these two filters from before, you can see it's a little bit more dull, a little bit more even. And afterwards, it really creates a lot of differentiation and it truly gives you some dynamic to the picture. So with that said, I'm done with the overall graduated filters. Here's from before and here's after. Really a huge difference in the overall mood. And as you can see, you can really take control over the light. Then I'm gonna grab an adjustment brush and for that you want to make sure that your feather is at 100, flow is at 100 and that auto mask is turned off. I'm gonna elaborate on that in a second. Then I'm gonna go into the color right here and add some warm tones. And I just want to brush over some areas that I think could use a little bit more warm tones. So maybe just some areas right there, you know, nothing crazy, but it can help to pronounce that a little bit more. And the reason you want to turn off auto mask is because it would otherwise automatically select what it thinks you want to be selected. So it will result in a very grainy and unnatural looking, you know, effect. So I would really suggest you to turn that off. But here, from before that adjustment brush to after, it does change the picture up a little bit. Here you could also add additional vignetting in just certain corners. And actually speaking of that, I might even do that with another adjustment brush, this time with just minus exposure and no actual color. And you know, just go over some areas on the corners right here that could use even more minus exposure. It's really just a hint and you know, the fine tuning, the closing out. 
So here from before any adjustment brushes to after, it's a little bit of a difference. So then let's go on to the last and most important local adjustment, yes, even more important than the graduated filters beforehand, and that is the rail filters. Now the rail filters, I'm going to use them for dodge and burning, and dodge and burning is making individual parts either darker or brighter. And instead of actually elaborating on why you want to do that, I'm just going to show you. So first of all, I'm going to go into the plus exposure, plus whites, as well as go into the color and once again add even more warmth right here. And you want to make sure that your feather is at 100 and that you invert the mask. And then you can just drag filters over your picture. So the reason you want to do that is because it complexifies your overall lighting scheme. And if there's, for example, a little bit of a boring flat area, you can just drag a filter over there and increase the overall interest and dynamic of that area. And that is really huge. You can also mix that with contrast and so on. If you're really interested about dodge and burning, I would suggest you to check out some of my more in-depth videos about that. But here, you know, it's a 10 minute video or something around that at least. So I'm not going to be able to elaborate that in great detail. But here, maybe for this very big filter, just a little bit plus exposure with some additional warm tones. And of course, just make sure it works. It looks natural. Then you can just right click and duplicate and drag it to another area. And it's very important to take a little bit of time here, even if you want to make an edit relatively quickly, it is worth to go here and with the rail filters and really spend some time and fine tune everything because the implications and the possibilities of that can really be huge. So once again, right click duplicate and I'm not sure how long this video is going to be in the, at the end, but I hope it's not going to be too much longer than 10 minutes. But once again, because Dodge and Burning is so important, I really want to take the time and show you everything here. And you can also stack filters on top of each other. You can also mix them in one another and, you know, just have one half of the one overlapping the other one. So the uh, possibilities are really endless. But once again, I'm just going to add some more filters and make it relatively quickly and maybe here even on the path so it makes it look as if some light from the you know the light right here would have spilled on the path and right click duplicate and i can even make this bench a little bit more interesting even though the bench is supposed to be in shadow I can still make it look a little bit more interesting while keeping it looking natural. And keeping it natural is really a very important thing because it's very easy to go overboard and go, you know, crazy into the adjustments and making it look completely fake, just like this right here. But if you do it right and if you take some care, take some time with all of that, then it can really be a huge benefit to your overall photo. And once again, I'm going to do it relatively quickly here, maybe even the grass right there, you know, just a little bit of exposure, then right click duplicate and let's see, maybe just make these leaves a little bit more interesting. And there are so many possibilities with different layers that you can use, um, different layers of filters that is. But, you know, once again, for this video, I'm not going to be able to elaborate too much on detail about that. But in terms of plus exposure, maybe after this filter right here, and, you know, maybe another one at the end, I think I'm pretty much done in terms of the plus exposure. So here's before any plus exposure, here's after. I mean, it completely changes the picture. I know it's a huge difference. But now I'm actually going to go into the minus exposure filters and that is pretty much the exact same thing just now with minus exposure. So I'm going to go here into the minus exposure, minus blacks and actually this time get rid of the color completely and then add some minus exposure filters. And the reason you want to also do the minus exposure filters is because it's very easy to make your overall picture relatively bright and shiny. So it can really work to at least have some parts that are a bit darker, that it creates even more interest, more complexity. And that's honestly what we're all about in these edits. So here, right click duplicate. Usually the minus exposure filters don't have such a huge impact or such a huge uh, possibility for changing a picture as the plus exposures do, but it's still very important to once again, at least play around with it. And I might have stacked on top of um, the minus exposure filters on top of some of the plus exposure filters. 
And that is not something that is necessarily bad, but of course, if you would have more time, then you can really plan that ahead and move around the filters in a way that really works the best. But here, I'm just going to give you a little, you know, glimpse, a little idea of what it can be like. And maybe even make this top part a little bit darker. You know, you can really play around with it. You can also play around with the sliders and maybe just go into the minus shadows if you just want the shadows to be darker. And honestly, I think that's pretty much it. Now here, I definitely went too much into the plus exposure. So let me actually bring that down and really just keep the color there. And while I'm at it, I'm also going to add another filter just for this area right here and go relatively heavily into the minus exposure. And I know that I do have the detail there, but I just went a little bit overboard with all of these plus exposure filters. So this is really a great way to fix that. And you know what, I'm actually going to spend another minute on just some refinement stuff. So first thing would be to add another filter with the tint towards the right. And I just want to draw out a relatively big one over just the right part of the picture right there. And that will give you a little bit of a differentiation from the green tones right here to the green tones right there. Nothing big, but it does help. And I also want to add some other filters with minus contrast, minus clarity, and just drag them over these very bright spots. And as you can see, I mean, these bright spots aren't really ideal. You could try to fix them a little bit with minus highlights, minus exposure. But since this was really a snapshot, I mean, this is the best thing that I can do here and really just diffuse the light a little bit. And then of course, right click duplicate and also drag it over this part right here. Maybe not so much with the minus exposure. And you know, there's really a lot more that you could do. There are tons of options, but I'm going to say that I'm done here. So just before any dodge and burning, here is after. And with that said, I'm also done with the entire picture. So let's take a quick glimpse at where we started out with. And this is the raw file right here. Very boring, very contrasty, a lot of dark shadows. And afterwards, it is certainly a lot more interesting, a lot more punchy. Now, of course, if you would prefer to not go quite as far, then you can always just choose all of these adjustments and go half as much as I have done. You know, it's just kind of an extreme example to showcase you the possibilities. Also, afterwards, you can see there are still these bright spots and the overall framing isn't that amazing. So I would really suggest you to take your time, plan your framing, plan your shooting, wait for the light, right lighting and so on to really get the best possible picture at the end. Because even though you might be able to take a bad raw file and turn it into a pretty good picture at the end, if you're going to start out with a really good raw file, then you're going to be able to turn this into an amazing picture. So thank you very much for watching and you can of course subscribe for more videos and Lightroom tutorials and photography stuff in the future. But a thing that I would actually really appreciate is if you could take a quick second to either like or dislike the video. It really helps me to see which kind of videos I should make in the future and if you've enjoyed this video or not. So thank you once again very much for watching. Take care and keep on editing great pictures.